Welcome. Today I'm going to talk about histograms and photography. So we'll cover basic terms like black tones, white tones, clipping, and exposure. Let's get going. So to start off, uh, histograms are all, all, often used to determine good exposure. <clears throat> it's also an option to override what is a normal exposure and what the camera gives you. So we'll learn how to evaluate that. First off, as you look at the diagram of histogram, like you see right here, uh, an actual definition of a histogram is the tonal range of an image. And so you see that represented here in a chart. First off on the far left-hand side are the black tones and the far right-hand side are the white tones. Uh, the stuff in the middle of that, that chart are considered the mid-tones. So you'll notice there are, are heights um, to my little mountain ranges here, and that is the number of pixels in that tonal range. This particular histogram has multiple colors, the red, green, blue, and, and yellow. However, some cameras only show a black and white histogram, and that's fine too. What we're really looking at is that left to right shift and seeing how well it represents the image that we've shot. So let's get into a little more in depth with some of the terminology, such as clipping. So if you find, uh, you can probably identify with this image that it is overexposed. So the whites in the image have, are lacking detail, and that is represented in our histogram in the bottom right-hand corner because the histogram is shifted to the right and I have pixels being pushed off on that right-hand edge. That's the example of clipped. If you have an underexposed image, you can see now the histogram is shifted to the left. So we have a lot more dark black tones up to mid-tones and nothing completely white. We see that in the photo as well as on the histogram. <clears throat> However, clipping is often referred to or considered most important when it's an overexposed clipping. If it's underexposed, you could just open up the shadows in software. But if it's an overexposed clip, you cannot recover the details. And this would be a proper exposure. So notice the histogram spans the entire tonal range from blacks to whites. And that's because those colors are represented in the image as well. So let's look at a few other situations. So if you were to look at this particular histogram, what could you think the photograph looks like when it comes to exposure? So first you would probably recognize on the far left-hand side, I do not have complete black tones and I do not have complete white tones, but I do have a fairly wide tonal range. Let's look at the photo. And here it is. So looking at the Superstition Mountains here, you can see the dark shadow areas are where those darkest tones came from. And then the lightest area is actually where the horizon meets the, the ground on the far left-hand side of the image. That's the brightest spot. And that's why it does not go completely to white. Let's look back at that histogram real quick. So again, nothing completely black and nothing completely white. And here's the image. So why would you wanna use a histogram instead of just looking at the image? If you are actually capturing images in bright light, sometimes your LCD panel might be deceiving. You might have a hard time seeing it. If I were to look at a picture like this on my LCD panel, it may look lighter or darker based on the light that is surrounding me in the real environment. But a histogram is a graphic chart, so it's really easy to read whether it's light or dark out. So it's a much better option when evaluating exposure. Let's take a look at a few more examples. So this histogram um, has, has quite a few tall peaks, and remember that's the number of pixels in that tonal range. What do you think the image looks like? I do have full black. I have a lot of also very dark tones, but I do have full whites as well. And here's the image. So you can see a nice little sun star. That's where my bright whites come from. But because the Monument Valley mittens are in silhouette, that gives me all my 
black tones and then the dark moody sky adds to that. Let's keep looking at a few more examples. So as you see each histogram, think to your mind, in your mind, what do you think this image would look like? Obviously you don't know the content, but what do you think the tonal aspects of the image would look like? So hopefully you're saying to yourself, this one has a lot of bright colors, but it does not have complete white because the histogram does not go all the way to the edge. And otherwise it does have a pretty full tonal range. And there's the image. <clears throat> white background, that's why we had so much in the brighter areas, but I still have, because the black kitten have a full tonal range included. This next histogram, hopefully you recognize there's a lot of dark tones and I still have a full tonal range. Here's the image. So as we go through these different images, I'm hoping that you'll think through as you see a histogram, what does the tonal range look like? So back to one of those first histograms that I showed you. This one shows a full tonal range, but there's a lot in the mid-tones. And this is a midday photo. So indicative of um, harsher shadows and bright light on our subjects. And as I mentioned before, remember the histogram can come in multiple colors. Your camera might display it in multiple colors or in just the black and white. Either way is acceptable. You're really looking at the overall shape. But if you did want to really identify the different colors, this, actually, this particular histogram shows the tonal range within each color um, channel. So if you did want to get more detail on the particular colors. So we have a full tonal range, nothing is clipped. And that would be the example of the photo. So I've got some bright whites. I do have some dark darks in some of the shadowed areas, but I have a full tonal range. Two more images. So this one does not have anything bright white. It does not have a full tonal range. And it's exactly as you would expect. So if I, after shooting this image, if I see that histogram, I'm gonna know that I um, exposed the image correctly. If I had a histogram with the whites all the way to the bright whites, it would not be a proper representation of my subject. And one last one here. So another example where we see very heavy histogram, not really shifted to the left, but very heavy on the left-hand side because of all the dark tones of the mushrooms. But I still have a full tonal range as it gets to the um, far right, where I get some of the bright areas from the background and the, um, the light on the top of the mushrooms. All right, so the last up is to find your histogram on your camera. Uh, some of the more common ways is if you play back an image and you use that thumb pad and um, uh, jot up, up or down, you should see it. If it's not activated, you might need to hit your display or info button on the back of the camera. And if you have a Nikon camera, oftentimes you really need to go into the menu and actually turn it on so that it will be activated and then you can use your up and down button. If you have a mirrorless camera, you can often see um, histograms live before you shoot the image. So that might be an option as you're learning more and more about exposure. And then lastly, many cameras have an option called blinkies or highlight alert. So if you play back your image and you have something really overexposed, you'll notice the overexposed areas flash in black. And that is just to let you know that is overexposed, that is clipped. So you'll wanna make an adjustment to your exposure before you continue on. All right, I hope you enjoyed this and uh, get out there and figure out where your histogram is on your camera and practice using it to get the best exposure possible.